Good afternoon to all of you and welcome to join us for this uh, artist share session for from blood to drops from right rhymes like let's just wrap it in the door. So medicals we might move out because of being spawned with dead cards and most of the only this out next act so it's like that we just want to put and so as you can see uh there's quite a bit of them you know so here uh but of course uh you before that I'll just like to uh, see uh if you if you're not from the night well uh they're right in the middle of the stock no in the middle of it they're right at the side of this uh we get of this um church but also I think this one to really him things that I'll be continuing for a for church unless so uh well don't I hope we have uh managed to spend some time to look around because some of these artists they're all these artists is gonna be talking about their motivation. So before before we go into those questions and things like that, maybe we'll just let each of these artists. But of course, first of all, let me just introduce all six of them first. Uh we'll start with him, Anissa, okay, and then Koi, and then of course Fei Pei, and then she has a very similar name to our Sigi, uh Pinay. We call it Pinay, yeah, Pinay, and then Ting, and the last one, Alice number three. Okay, so maybe we'll start with uh the capital letter of A, uh, Anissa, yes, Anissa. On. Hello. Yes. Hi. Tell us a bit of your uh, narrative of your like your journey as an artist. Okay. Um. I think if you want to set a timeline, my journey as an artist is a bit red though. Um. Before the pandemic, I actually stopped drawing. What I studied was fine art, and that was the time on campus we get to explore many things. Like you don't know what's the direction yet. Finish fine art. Working, I was renting in a center, so there was a lot of performance, exploring performance art. After that, I moved to Indonesia to study traditional dancing, and then I didn't want to eat in Indonesia, so I continued studying metal craft to one. And then it happened for a few months later, virtually, and now i back, and I just started on your day. Then pick me. Okay, I'll just continue. I complete all in series in Shanghai. I mean, it's currently a pursuit when you see in Shanghai Kauti, you will see if you guys know. Uh, I think you don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, Tongqi is good in architecture, and so I'm pursuing my architecture PhD in Tongqi. I'm um, major in history of young architecture, which is far not related to my art. Uh, I have um, a totally different three. Uh, in expressing my art and also experience the art. But um, I paint the environment of Shanghai campus um, in my artworks that is displayed state. So um, please enjoy looking at the art and also ask me a lot of questions because I really love to tell story and also love to interact with you and to see your point of view of my art. So I'm not going to tell too much of my inner side, um, but of uh, sharing of our thoughts and feeling on my own. Let's focus on that today. Thank you. Koi. This P is my sister. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm from Shingwei, and um, have you speaking Thai and teaching will help me to last day. So um, for this piece, especially the middle one with the blue, so she's kind of drawing in her own world. Because Chiang Mai is a very, uh, it's a really very laid back place. She's normally from, from Bangkok, and she moved to Chiang Mai because of the, of the slow pace um, lifestyle. So um, that picture is how my house feels like for her. What me hot, and uh, I think it is for pencil do. She was formerly uh, living in Chiang Mai for 50 years. So she's studying uh, fine arts in Chiang Mai University. And so the, the, the group of people that she mingled with in Chiang Mai is mainly artists. And it's because it's a tourist destination. So the people who come in and exchange with us is very, very diverse. So she, can, um, she has many different topics that she can in you know, 3D experiment with and um, observe. But when she met um, her son, uh, is also studied in Chiang Mai, but he graduated recently. So she has all of these in the state Chiang Mai. But when she moved to Chiang Mai, which is more, you know, more even slower, Chiang Mai is slow, 
you want to go to a slower place, it's the same ride. And so, but the people that are mainly minority people or hill type people, so she has this um, influence from these people that goes into her art book, which you'll see the comes the butterflies, the autumn wings, you'll see the hill type um, pattern. So that has a lot to do with this. Um, hill type people, the minority people in, in Thailand are, are very suppressed, are very, uh, are very left out. So she plays a lot with that feeling comes, you know, the, the, the border people, the people who is on the, on the back. Yeah. Yourself. <laughs> okay. So, um, my work, uh, I used to live, uh, I'm living in Chiang Mai. I was living in Chiang Mai for 20 something years and then I think it's time for me to get out of my cave. So I moved to Babcock for two years during the pandemic. And I went there when nobody was there. Okay, there were people there, but nobody's on, on the streets. So it has like, a big influence on how I see my, myself and my work. And I think it kind of opened the door, a safe door, because I don't like to sound on my cake. But when I go to back up the, bus the busy kind of city and nobody's on the street, it makes me feel like, yeah, I can open my door to nothingness. And it, it shapes me in how I see my work as just purely expressive art into something I can sell and make the, let it living out of it. And I think it has a big influence how I stance myself and place my art in the art scene. Because I think that every artist has this um, conflict with it, like should I sell or should I be, you know, sincere to myself, should I be honest? So I think I sound that with me, not with the other house, with me on how I place myself with art and for show. Yeah. So, but, but now I go back. I, I give it, give enough bad cop. I moved back. I gave up. I'm not good enough. So I went back to the chip market and I still, but I, it's, it's still there. I still feel that um, bustling uh, enthusiasm with it that I can create and I can make a little now with it. Under the uh, I was flying in Indonesia, then uh, when I got the meeting started, then I studied May. I did the meeting for nine years. So I managed to study. Oh, then did it. Not the exam. They were dealing with my mom and dad. So I did a lot of things. How many? And they found that it really worried me. When I went to Pin during the pandemic, uh, I see this. So I play a lot the day. Then I have to go to White Girl and I don't know if she made uh, White Chair in the bed. So I'm on the how I can, uh, I, I didn't to explore the magic bills, which is not that you can try it. But what I got thing that there's. So I think when I was uh, speaking to some of this, people, the artists, from, it's very interesting to know that Chip Pinang and Chiang Mai have quite a huge number of similarities. Yeah. And it's also surprising that it took so, so long to come together as two cities to like, you know, collaborate. Uh, and it's, it's, it's nice for us to probably do this. And it's even nicer to finally have it started, of course, with all our, uh, you know, female artists, because I always feel like, uh, you know, that's just like, I think it was well, yesterday, yeah, yesterday when Lika was doing the opening, there was like this message, but you know, the, uh, the industry is like so, previously was like, so male driven and that they don't really like have platform for our female artists to come out. So it's nice that they had this first kickoff date and then, you know, have like the six female artists to actually get this thing started. So, because in Chiang Mai itself is like a creative city, it's part of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network. And then from Penang, of course, we're proud of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So there are, there's this one of the similarities that we share. And in terms of art as well, I think, you know, Penang and Chiang Mai, uh, like what I mentioned just now, Penang, uh, we, we tend to be a, a city of more experimental nature. We like to give uh, people or the artists the chance to express more. Uh, whereas, of course, in Kinao, it's a bit more uh, structural in a way, so to say. Uh, 
So people that are big like art style, but not so much like expressing the expression of themselves. So I think that's the same uh, as for Shanghai as well. Uh, they do a lot of art based on not, not just for the sake of like selling them all, but it's for the sake of art. So uh, anyway, we will start with the first question that I have in mind for you all. Like we come back to the point where I really wanted to know like, uh, for example, like Penang or even Malaysia or uh, Chiang Mai, like how is, you know, like how, how is the city influencing your work in general? Uh, maybe just because of because the community surrounding it, are they like, you know, becoming part of the uh, support system for you or do you see things around these communities that influence you? So for people who maybe like, um, you know, Zoom Trotters, like, you know, for three who has been like, you know, uh, with origin in Indonesia and then had families slaying over the internet as well. So, you know, um, been to all these places, right? But that uh, the place that you spent the most time with in, like for example, uh, Pei Pei, maybe, uh, you spent most, most of the time, in fact, quite equally here and there as well. So, but I want to know, like, you know, those cities, how do they influence you in your work? Because I know, uh, you know, art is not just about ourselves as well, but also being in the community that we live in. So I really want to explore uh, that angle or something. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, tell us where you spend most of your time in and how do this environment influence your work? This is because of having done a little bit of that. <laughs> no, you're sitting here next to me, so you're under curse. Okay, I guess uh, a lot of like the process uh, is actually between Malaysia, KL, World of KL, and also Jogja. That's where I studied for a long time and I just came back early of this year. And to pull a similarity between Ime and KL, I mean, kind of summarize how the Philippines, I think that is the fight for any capital city that is quite fast. Um, but I can't pull the similarity between Pipek and Jogja because the type 4 is more chill, more sun tight. And then what I admired there was a lot of sense of community within the arts. It's, yes, we still, we still make party, isn't it, Wani? But it's still, uh, it's just like, it's more like, uh, you can still make this happen if you have friends who have the same idea. You are the upper, you are the upper, let's talk together and do something. And I think that creates an ecosystem where the arts can be, it's like a river flowing. You want to express something, but the blockage is that we want to. So because the ecosystem, and I feel like that's where I started with more where I need to explore my work also when I was sleeping, staying there for study. Because before I went there, I was only going there to explore something new, but Fine art was like, I kind of want to marry a bit for that. I didn't know I want because I thought the scene in KL was very like conceptual, contemporary. But it didn't align with what I felt inside. So when I went to Jogja, which always remained the way to Jogja, I was describing it to my individual friends. He begs, it's like Jogja, but I know the thing. Um, there was more space to just be. Yeah. So, um, like, like um, we said earlier, um, Chiang Mai is a fine arts university uh, kind of a city. So all the students there have this uh, experimental phase where they go through many types of techniques and stuff. So this, um, this vibe also affected the people who works in art, who, who did study fine art. So like Kikoi, she feels like she has many friends who study fine art will kind of not unpack her or encourage her to say, yeah, you try this technique, try this technique, and don't be shy, don't be scared of the point of or feel that you'll be judged. So in this piece, she did like so many, how to, so many types of um, uh, techniques that she learned when she went to uh, take uh, class classes in Europe. Because uh, uh, the European illustrations, like storybooks, are all very experimental. So she feels like she can use all these different techniques to express what she wants to talk about. And since this is the first time that she comes abroad to, you know, ex exhibit, then she, then she said, why not go crazy? Like to everything. So in Chiang Mai, uh, because uh, uh, Pinay, she studied with her friends and then all her friends are still mostly in Chiang Mai. So the, um, the exchanges that she has with her friends are kind of informal. 
and kind of open and very experimental. And mostly the exchange, not on the techniques and skills, but it's more on the concepts and contents and thinkings and perceptions. But when she moved to Chiang Rai, so Chiang Rai, they have many, many famous, nationally famous, uh, big, big artists, like 400 of them. And we live huddled in the small room space, you see. And it's very quiet, so they, they stand out like a big spotlight. So it's really hard to come compete with them on that exchange level. If there's an exchange, you'll be like, hey, what's your skill? What's your experience? What's your technique? And they're so seasoned, you know, it's so hard to, you know, to have that three expressions. And because they're so rich, so accomplished, people would just go to their house, to the studio and buy the stuff. So it's kind of hard to compete with them on commercial art. It, it's easier to, to make art there quietly, cerebrally, and then come to Chiang Mai and then sell the piece. But when, so when she's in Chiang Mai, she has done so many, you know, appeals. She said like media, photography, inst in instruments, um, sculptures, wax, like video, documentary. So it's a lot more free in Chiang Mai, but, uh, but uh, it's not as quiet as Chiang Rai. So that's pros and cons. Man, how much? For example, I mean, you you probably were born in Taiwan, yes. and but but then you spent was a time here in Chiang Mai. So how does the, like Chiang Mai influence you in your work? Okay, community around it. This this topic is very interesting for me because I used to feel like I don't belong anywhere. I am not a pure Chinese. I am not a pure Thai. I I feel like that twilight zone in my life all the time. Like I like you know like the um I think and anybody who was not who's migrant will feel like this. But because all the people around me when I've gone in Thailand are Thai. And even if they are Chinese, they have diluted the, their Chinese-ness into Thai. So I feel kind of um, strange and stranded a bit. And I feel like, kind of like a freak on a daily basis. But it also made me feel like, yeah, if I, if, I'm, if I don't belong anywhere, then I can be anything. Save away, in a way. But when I came to Penang, and everybody is like me. Everybody speaks multi language, and they have different uh, experiences. They don't belong to one sector, but yet they feel I do belong in a way. So I feel like Penang is a very, it's a very interesting place. It's like this twilight film all the time. And, and you guys still have this very strong Chinese culture, very strong Malay, very strong um, uh, India. And it's, it's so refreshing to see this weirdness that combines so well and still thrives. And so, and yeah, it's very refreshing for me to see it. But in Chiang Mai, I feel like this, this thing that I'm renting the space. So I feel experimental in that way. Not not that because, you know, I experiment with my friends, but I feel that me as this thing that floats around can do anything and I will be held accountable. I can say, oh, I don't know. If I if they say, why do you do this like this? And I say, oh, I don't know this, I don't know. I, I had that excuse and they will just see what I mean of the folk. So, man. So, Putri, I think you've already did it in Egypt, but then your friend minister was the Nang but then you've been the big Tanaka like the past nine years or so, right? So, uh, how does the Nang influence you even more where, like, uh, or probably, you know, it doesn't have to be too far in the environment, but immediate, your immediate environment, how do they influence your work? I'm just sitting there. I'm the god, I did nature now. So, I think me should be because I'm introvert. Uh, I used to spend my time with nature walking and Seeing she at the court, so they share this white dance, the uh, energy and the code is very fresh. You compare to this animal where I knew before, very happy, uh, very close to yeah. So, but yeah, and the children and everything, I think also quite I miss my friends. They are uh, born in Tunisia, but in Islam, because of and then we spend time together a lot and so I went to crash and asked him why very some what about they are like before about my identity about what happened before about history and, and everything so I think 
and there's a really small section as I feel like I'm I said question about myself more because of that and uh, before pandemic I I've used to like how uh, there is many who if you might help uh, Indonesia where I can go so I think uh, the pan- when the pandemic start I said to go think like maybe I shouldn't have go to Indonesia and is it uh, the place where I can fall in the start to there or uh, uh, my identity uh, then when uh, the lockdown uh, was hard and I remained I spent all of my time uh, uh, in Peru actually to my most the hand although I didn't throw it uh, I don't name a lot of diesel I just go flow in uh, but I you uh, more clear connection between this myself and nature uh, in what I've been so it's like I am so sure that I, I can feel the speed I can feel the speed how to the effects in with me how it impact me yeah. even the swallowing how uh, the eating land the rules effect the, the, the furniture in and the kindle uh, how frames uh, outside one of us so fact uh to you I I can very sensitive I would be that kind to explain why I've been was the thing in fact I would that I never great to come back to if you pay I uh figuring you should have the house time to think about <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I did in opposite way they because I enjoy a lot so we're talented as a, um, a local Chinese in China, you know, they tend to forget that I am actually a foreigner and Chinese Chinese. I mean, yeah, I'm too much like Chinese, and I speak very good Chinese. Yes, <laughs> and so they tend to forget that I am actually a foreigner. So I enjoy like hiding myself and the real me from all of them. Then yeah, that acting actually my real me. It brought up that girl is, you know, the, uh, yeah. So, so uh, but uh, at the same time, the, the, the Chinese character or the Chinese culture that is like 12 in Ibrahim doing a good thing to me, uh, profit me, benefits me along with my way of growth, and also how I can appreciate the poetry and the meaningful things behind the Chinese culture. but. Uh, I am not trying to emphasize um, that culture, that particular culture. I'm actually trying to emphasize the exchange of the traditional, the heritage way, and the contemporary way, and contemporary aesthetics. Say, so, yeah, because uh, I think that's my responsibility when I practice as an artist to bring the contemporary dialogues in between with uh, to exchange with traditional methods and so that's why you see uh, my works like to like derive from traditional art but yet it speaks in a contemporary way so I hope that uh, what I have sums up or I concluded from all my research all along the way from your childhood written state and um, 40 years of the <laughs> um, I hope that it really uh, speaks um, to the old people and also the people today and also the kids, especially the kids. So um, I'm very happy that the kids can really understand my hands. You know, I don't need to explain too much, I don't need to give any words behind it and then they can just appreciate it their own way. So I am uh, focusing on like, uh, giving back the freedom to you. Um, please appreciate my art at your own aesthetics. Uh, none of my business, huh? You like it or don't like it, then follow your own way, follow your own thoughts, and follow your own experience. And also, I would like to also um, express my appreciation to Miss Queen Yi. Without our curator, um, I would never be brave enough to, you know, bring myself to international. You know, 
exchange with a Thailand artist and have a great chance to make friends with the Chiang Mai artists. Uh, not really Chiang Mai because we all have complicated background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a distant, very good chance that we will also um, fly ourselves to Chiang Mai for the second round of exchange. So this is not the only dialogue. We will have a second dialogue and I hope that we can have further third dialogue and we squeeze my boss <laughs> um, uh, all my art journey down the world future. So I, I'm not feeling lonely anymore because before that, you know, it's so lonely. Yeah, only myself is doing the contemporary Chinese art. You know, only me alone, which is also good. No, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, it is always fruitful when we have exchange. We have to we and we um, exchange our experience and also techniques and also materials, especially because I I uh, try all my arts on different way of uh, rice paper, so it focus on the material itself and so and also the narrative way of how I tell a story. I think I learned a lot from P, Koi, P, Ne, and also PT, our, you know, our Thai narrator. Yeah, now I can start to speak Thai already. So when you go to the, uh, the other exchange, yeah, I will go. Get ready, my language. So yeah, my, the seven language, you know. Ah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I think, uh, but, uh, Talking about the city, because I, I complete my art in Shanghai uh, while I'm pretending as a local trainee there. <laughs> but um, uh, without that environment, I cannot do, I cannot produce this series. Because uh, it's the essence of that feeling, be alone and talking to the, you know, talking to the little animals and creatures, they actually keep you warm, especially very warm. To be is already a woman. I call it she. She. So um, I myself is actually gender neutral. I act as man when I'm working, and instead that girl, I I don't really uh, feel or emphasize on gender. But yeah, both to me is female already. So it is undoubtedly painting or expressing on top of a woman role. So. Yeah, so the, this series without Shanghai, I cannot complete it at all, I believe. When I come back, I cannot produce any arts. I have no stability today. Ah. Yeah, it won't, it won't be static, it won't be so lively. Like, Queen gave each of you the brief, like, like you know, um, you know, from Berlin and Parchan. Um, so I wanted to know, like, I mean, other than they pay, which of course the wound is very apparent that you can see in her work, I want to know, like, for the rest, of you, how do you bring the uh, component of uh, the element of mood into your words? Like, how how would you? I mean, if, if we want to know, like, how how would you bring those in? Like, how then what would you like? You know, what would you tell to the audience? Like, where can we find the relevance of the mood? It doesn't just have to be visually about the moon, because the moon represents so many things that sound like feminine, yeah. but it's more representing uh, the mystery things like that. So I want to know, like, for each of these artists, like. How do you bring those, uh, or those, those, the, the concept of the mood into your work? So you don't want to listen from me. I mean, I mean, we can listen to you because, like, for, I'm sure for you, I'm sure for you, other than visually, there are, of course, I'm very, uh, so I, I'll, I'll start. Okay, true, for you, you think well. Yeah. Um, um, I, I know all here, uh, all my sister here expressing themselves or expressing. Um, woman it is within this team, but uh, I, I accept me, I say, because um, I emphasize more on the different role or the sake of uh, uh, focusing on the gender wise role. So um, I express and you no, know, I, I create my series of art to express the lively and the fun and the play part of the world instead of woman. Yeah, I am putting myself at the moon. So moon is me, myself is the same the moon. Um, uh, 
to my friends, I think they know another side of me, but uh, uh, actually I'm very playful, I'm very fun and friendly and, you know, I love interactions. Uh, so a little bit. I love to play, you know, if it's both questions and um, uh, uh, childish people. <laughs> so yeah, that's also me. Yeah, so I would like to remind you that more is not only find the sky and the actually can interact with uh, all of the creatures in the world in the nature with our own way. Yeah, this is a way like a self-portrait, but a different persona on you. Yes, self-portrait. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yet. Interesting. How do you make concept more into your work for, for, for this particular exhibition? Like, or um, with the relevance that, uh, that you can tell us? Or, or, you know. So when we empty kind of so we yeah we plan on the tip of the moon when the tip of the moon came up. I was already in three weeks a thought that I had for a while. Uh and that is like on how we prescribe character and the kind of attributes we did to our folklore character or urban legend and specifically the Hantu style, especially in South Asia. And we have a lot of similarity with other country, especially for example like Malaysia, our famous for sister is for Tiana, but Indonesia has Tirana, Stavono. I just know that uh, Thai has the Netherlands, a banana, three goes. Indonesian obeys are not not. They have none learned, have none. And we also had, I bet someone told me we also have banana thief goes. And we also have banana. Uh, you guys also have this white head thing also. And yeah, yeah. And then in, uh, in Indonesia, we have it. And then also the Philippines, we have like, it's called Nana Nangal, if I'm not mistaken. Don't know why. Uh, the action is a cultural aspect to this, how it's spread ecological aspect also but uh, maybe also because they can fly so they can travel and I'm rather and all that um, but when I was thinking about all this uh, how we tell our stories of ghosts and urban legend what I find is a lot of chunk of it was uh, female and always the story is always like there's some deaths from tragedy like childbirth, rape, murder or tales of uh, witchcraft or Bomo, you know, like Penanga is like she wants to feather you. So um, I, I wanted to explore that and I'm not with this word, I'm not trying to deny their existence. So if they're the state, don't get offended. Um, but it said I want to revisit their stories, their narratives, even different bands because I think how we tell our story or how we visit them is new what they're coming forward to. And also, I, uh, I mean, besides the cultural aspect, I would say that the moon relationship, my, this is not my theory, but why our ghost is mostly white, I'm thinking because our ecology, our region is very forest. So I'm thinking like this new turns of trees is how the lights of the moon light coming in, like, so we're like, why don't we take you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there's more, we can talk about like ghost stuff. But I want to welcome people to approach it in a clean, bold, and curious way instead of theories. So for Pikoi, um, the moon has never, uh, she's never seen mood as a representative of female or femininity. It's more like there, you know, the, the day by day mood is there thing. So she incorporated into a uh, thing that she had tell a story about how in the pictures, you see that uh, the story does two pictures in every in every set, and one set will be uh, the person herself wanting to, uh, and the other thing is something that she wants to to have or to fulfill. So uh, the person that herself will start at the full moon because she all energy and stuff, and then they will start to wane, wane more till it be totally disappear at its own age. And on the contrary, uh, the things that she wants to put there will start as a waning moon, uh, wax or wake, I don't know, but as so well know, yeah, the, the moon. But then it will grow more and more as she age, and then it will be something that's fulfilled or complete at the end. So she said, uh, we can uh, see a difference that all the, all the characters in, in the other uh, former months will be facing towards what they want. 
but only on the last one, the wedding will be facing towards the audience to say, yeah, I'm not looking for something else to on here. So she has always um, depicted uh, the mood as uh, femininity, always, because the, the moonlight is very soothing and she likes to take, you know, light visual walks and she feels the set her car as the soothing mouth drop the, drop the wall. And so um, she feels like um, the mood has this uh, aspect that looks mysterious, the fancente, very dynamic. It's not, it's not the same all the time. So she also didn't predict that in the world, but it's like when she sees the moon, she feels like she's going to live another world and she wants to go to that other world. She doesn't want to go to the sun because it's hot, but the moon looks relaxing, calm to be. And for me, uh, the moon, uh, I'm very into um, psychology, especially uh, Carl Gustav Jung and uh, his student of Freud. So the short is, he talks a lot about the dark side and raising the dark side. And it has a lot to do with uh, my um, interest in Vajrayana Buddhism, which is also talking about embracing your dark side to not, um, to not push something you don't want in your life away but to embrace it and to be unconditional with it. So the moon for me is uh, that other part. We all know that there's one part of the moon that we never see, visible proper. So I think the moon for me is, is that. It's the same connection that we have with the moon and we have with ourselves. That there's a part that's waiting to be addressed, waiting to be acknowledged. And, and when we're aware of that, it will change a whole experience as a whole, you know. Like, you know, the holy thing, holy, it comes from the word whole. It cannot be holy if, if it's not depicted as a whole. It will always be like, like you're so used to talking about things like, but it's good then the bad thing's absent, but it's not. The bad thing has to be there, has to be present for something to be holy. So that's what I'm talking about in life. Yeah, how, how do you read the concept of moon into your two textile pieces? But it's still my type of stuff in the feet where there are a lot of buttons but then buying to take the V. So I always saw the reflection of to my jump a little bit. So one day I walk around the area, there's so many things in the area, so I and I saw a uh, very bright at the I'm thinking like, oh, it's too far away. But the reaction on the, on the surface of the lead around me. So I'm going to explain that. Something that might be far, but, uh, but the beauty of the moon also is like, very close to me, around me. But I still saw anything uh, at the area I go, uh, my arms. Me thinking because uh, I say my family is so I make I, I question about my identity. I mean, be thinking maybe that I don't raise in Indonesia in meaning Kappa any, but uh, after why after so close with this at me, why uh, I have this desire to know about it? I think it's it just like it, it just like the only. There's beauty in it. I want to learn and I want to know even it's far away. Uh, I think I can learn. I my family. Just meant. <laughs>